part two of the um, 17th of April Equipping Heaven Dwellers meeting. I just put up the diagram of the different courts as Kathy was about to um, share on them. Yes, and I can see that it's being recorded, so <laughs> that's good. So um, this uh, diagram of the courts of the Lord, um, I find I, when I first saw this, I just was I'm like, wow, this is like, wow, that was so visionary to me. Um, and and you can read over all of these pieces and parts and, and they're just awesome places to go and be. But we want to introduce you. We want to talk to mostly today about the mobile court. Um, because it's the one, it actually, you see a faint line down there just below the mobile court. It actually should be below that line um, because it's the court, and that's why it's called mobile, is because it can be engaged anywhere on the earth. So it's mobile around the earth, but it's also called the court of accusation because it is where uh, we are accused and where we can accuse um, others or or we can ask the accuser that's this I'm sorry this is what I meant to say we can ask the accuser to come and let us know what his accusation is against us that is blocking us holding us back um, there can be lots of different reasons and things sometimes we know what the accusation is and if so then we need to just um, go in and repent for it but uh, if we don't then this is how we can find out so um, I have a, I mean, there's, there is protocol. Um, I was thinking about this this morning and realizing that if someone didn't have a really good picture of how uh, a courtroom works, then I suggest you go visit your county courthouse. And um, because there, you can visit that. You can go in and sit in the back and observe what's going on because it's a public place. Um, there might be court cases that are closed to the public, but there's a lot of them that are open. So if you want to see how it works, that's really kind of how it works. I mean, our, our uh, courts on the earth are patterned after the courts in heaven and uh, what the record that was left behind us in Leviticus. So um, our, our courts are patterned after that and they used to operate in that until I don't know that they are today so much. But, um, but they used to be. And so there is protocol. And when we uh, approach the mobile court, we, um, at least when I do, I, I say I, am, I ask for audience at the mobile court. Um, you can also convene the mobile court. But I feel like the mobile court is always open and there and available. It's mobile and it's 24-7. It's so, um, so I ask for audience at the mobile court. And then I honor the righteous judge and our advocate, who is Yeshua and the Holy Spirit, and um, whoever else might be in the court, the, the cloud of witnesses, and the um, men in white linen often visit the court when we come in because um, one of the, uh, um, when I first started entering into the mobile court, I was told that I could come back there and observe. At it when I wanted to and so I did I went back and observed one day and I was um, sitting up in the you know what you call the balcony above above the court with with the other cloud of with those in the, in the cloud of witnesses that were also observing this court session and um, I was given the revelation that that anyone that we have prayed for that when we when they enter into the court system we into the court and mobile court we can um we can we have a right to go and um uh, and um participate in their case and <clears throat> so that was really encouraging to me because i had always i kind of had felt that well my prayers weren't going to do much anyway so i had actually kind of stopped praying for people and um so the Lord was showing me that everyone that I had prayed for, and so this is really encouraging for intercessors who've really spent a lot of time praying for other people, that whenever the people that you've prayed for or the situations you've prayed for, 
come into the court, you, you have a right to go and, and uh, be a witness to that. So anyway, um, there is protocol. Um, you want to be honoring of the righteous judge, and then you present your case, and you need to bring your case before the Lord, before the, before the righteous judge, and um, you build on scripture. How you present your case is just like you would in a court. You have to have reasons and righteousness and stuff, and so you build on scripture. You build on the promises that have been given to you. You build on the Father's heart's desire for us. Um, you build on God's promises. You can take any of God's promises. I mean, you could build four or five different things, but one is good. So um, if you can't think of any other things, then just ask the Holy Spirit for at least one reason. Uh, you can take prophetic words that have been given to you and, um, and uh, ask for them to, to come to pass. Or you can ask why they aren't coming to pass. So... Uh, and you can also uh, present your case on the basis of Yahweh's character and nature. So um, let's see. You can use the court two different ways. You can use it defensively, as in your own stuff, um, dealing with your own stuff, particularly generational stuff. Uh, you know, maybe if I had murdered somebody, the best way to get over guilt would be to go to the mobile court and ask the father to forgive me. Also ask why I might have committed that action. Um, what, what lies within my, the frequencies in my DNA and RNA that might have encouraged my, me to have caught, to have actually participated in that action. And, um, and then the Lord will, you know, at least in my experience, the Lord gives get, would give me a picture, give me an understanding. Sometimes I would ask how many generations back this got planted in my DNA so that I, I kind of had an understanding of um, how long it had been operational in my generational line. So um, you can do that. I have... Um, put together a protocol that that has worked for me as I have um, as I have worked through different aspects of my DNA that the, there's so many different ways to do this you can uh, Ian went back through every year of his life and he felt so good that he went back through every month and every day and every hour and I decided that at my age that was way too much work <laughs> so so I just started. I just started being really um, objective and hard on myself, probably, but objective about attitudes and thought processes and words that were coming out of my mouth and emotions that I had. And I would take those into the mobile court and I would say, "All right, just judge. I I want to know why I am. Why am I? Why am I angry? Why am I this? Why am I that? You know, what? Why am I this or that?" And I he would usually give me a picture. At, when I first started going to the mobile court, I really didn't want to deal with the enemy. So the one thing about this court is it's really a safe place for us to go because we don't have to deal with the enemy. If you look at the, the parable that Jesus, the story that Jesus told about the widow woman going to the right unrighteous judge, uh, she did not have to deal with her adversary. She only dealt with the judge. And so the judge can, the judge or the Holy Spirit can hear the accusations from the enemy. As I got a little more confident and, and uh, got things cleaned up out of myself, I got to the place where the enemy didn't threaten me anymore. And so I could adjure him. This is a, a word that we need, we can use because, um, what did you say the meaning of that was, Michelle? Would you say that again? Uh, strong judgment, strong, um, yeah, um, strong command. Yeah, it, it's a command that, that he has to obey, that the, the enemy absolutely has to obey. If you notice, there was a couple of times when the Pharisees, speaking to Jesus, they adjured him. Mm -hmm. And um, that we're doing the same kind of thing to the enemy. We're adjuring the enemy. He has to come in, and he has to speak the truth. He can't play around with you, and he doesn't speak to you. He speaks to the judge. Mm -hmm. Because he speaks to the judge, he has to speak the truth. And he can't mess around. And, and um, so anyway, it's a really safe place for us to go. And um, 
and we can we're protected there and so um so we but after so after i got a little more confident and i got some of the junk cleaned out of me i didn't mind have adjuring the enemy to come and, and tell me what his accusations were and, and as i grew in confidence of being able to hear then uh then i could hear those those uh, accusations myself and um then sometimes uh, i wouldn't know so i mean in my life i have had layer upon layer upon layer of anger so there was sometimes i would be just angry just furious raging and i had no idea why so i'd start going okay lord i just go before the lord and say why why am i angry and he could show me he he could show me he could let the enemy accuse me he could show me and um so there there's other other things things come up where you just really don't quite know what to do and uh, so you can adjure the enemy to come in and accuse you and then you um the the best thing to do is to come into agreement with him it's like i agree with whatever the enemy's accusations are actually the enemy has a better memory than we do and he has a longer memory uh, far, as far as generations go he can remember all those things and so we just agree with him because it doesn't matter what it is because um because we're forgiven we're, we were we were forgiven at the cross and we're already forgiven we just need to receive that forgiveness uh, I, I remember hearing um, one of one of the guys that was teaching me on this he was in the court one time and uh, the the enemy told me that he was a goat raper and I mean he, he was like I am <laughs> it wasn't something he'd done but it was something in his generational line. And he says, I don't think it could get any worse than this. So just agree with the, you know, agree with the enemy and, and ask forgiveness because we're already forgiven. And then you need to forgive your ancestors. If this, if something ends up being generational and not just yours, that's one of my first questions is I ask the Lord or ask the righteous judge, is this mine? Is it only mine? In other words, it's, am I the only that did this start and finish with me? Then in that case, I need to deal with me. If it's not only mine, then I ask if it's my my generations. And depending on just how, um, I, from lie busters, I got information about, you know, go, finding out if it was on your mother's side or your father's side and how many generations back. You might not want to go through all that. And then again, you might. You, you, I, I learned a lot about my generations by asking those questions and finding out things because a lot of that kind of stuff is not in your family history it'll be the stuff if they were witches or warlocks or if they were masons all that the mason masonic was a big deal on secrecy they, it won't be in your in your family history i've looked in my family history and it's not in the written family history so <clears throat> so you learn a lot about about this stuff in your generations by um by asking questions and and then uh then you, because, because it's in your own personal DNA and RNA, you need to ask, you need to forgive your, your, your uh, generations, your forebears for, for putting this in your generations. Instead of putting love and joy and peace in there, they put all of these um, vows and, and negative stuff, at least in mine. And so, so I forgive them. I, I needed to forgive them. I forgave them. And then I picked up from Henry Groover to speak reconciliation over, over them. So I speak reconciliation over them that they can become reconciled <laughs> to the Father. And then I ask the Father to forgive them as well. And so there, there is a protocol. I've, I've gotten one kind of written up that's just kind of bullets, and um, I can make that available. Because, because I've led people through this, and they can't always remember, remember how it goes. But they're... There is a protocol. Once you get your, it all forgiven, then you um, ask the Lord to cleanse your DNA and RNA. And when I've done this, I've seen those black spots turn to light. I've seen those black spots turn to light in, in my being. And that, that was so awesome. And then I plant, this is a victory to you. This is a victory to us. We have overcome something that's in our, in our, um, in our, in the frequencies in our DNA. So we plant that frequent, we plant that victory in the garden of our heart and water it with the Holy Spirit. And then, I, then we ask the Lord to, um, 
to divorce us from these things. And one of my favorite things is to put plant the cross between all of the witchcraft prayers and curses that have come before between them and me and that all the all the reaping and sowing has to stop right now at the cross and the other thing i do is i take um, whatever's been stolen from me i take it to the sea of glass and i trade it for um, i usually trade it for what's been stolen from me if 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 freedom has been stolen then i trade for freedom I trade for whatever I can think of. I trade for the character and nature of God. I trade for more relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I trade for what, mostly what's been stolen from me. So you can trade on. You can trade. You can trade these things, and you can trade for anything you that you want. But um, most of us want to trade for like more love, joy, and peace, or something like that. So we need to remember that the court is. Uh, it, courts are considered a place of judgment, but we need to remember that God's judgment isn't unto annihilation and death. It's unto correction and life. God's judgment is unto correction and life. And I think that's one uh, principle of the courts of the Lord or, or even God's ways that has been, has been we've missed in the church because it seems like it's all been into, into negative things instead of being judged into life and into correction. So um, I think that's all I have, um, Michelle. And so um, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thanks, Kath. That's awesome. Um, yeah, just in what Kathy said about um, the courts being for judgment to life, um, a friend of mine just said, uh, told me today about something that I've known, but it, it just reminded me again um, that um, God's judgment, uh, you know, he, he, he laughs at his enemies and that's how he judges them. <laughs> so the courts are set up for, for the joy of our freedom and for the destruction of the enemy uh, and his works, which Jesus has, of course, already dealt with. But the courts are there for us. In other words, God's judgments are judgments to life, but against the enemy, he laughs at his enemies. And so that's our victory, that if um, and when the enemy um, has had an opportunity because we gave it to him and has therefore an accusation, a legal accusation, um, then as we you know, deal with it in the court by repenting, uh, we get the joy of our victory that Kathy was talking about. We get, the, we, we get to take back, just as in a court case, you get to take back or you, you get to um, put in your, in your requirements, in your demands, whatever, you want to take back. That's part of a court case, what you want to take back. And so um, sometimes these things just get given back to you when you're in court and um, the angels will give you something that, that, that are there or someone from the cloud of witnesses, or you'll just see a change, um, like you, you'll you see there's a crown on your head or whatever. Different things will happen in the court that are part of a, a restoring, and there's also things that you can specifically see to take back. One of the important things I mentioned earlier is that we we function in the courts as part, as part of the image that we are in is the image of the Father lion ox eagle man and two of those are the priest and the king and so we function as priest and king in these courts and as a priest we come on behalf of and that's what kathy was saying earlier is that you can you can't come in in a negative or judgmental way you can't come in and say lord kill them all you know <laughs> you can't do that because the only way you can come in to um the court the mobile court or any court for that, uh, that matter is, uh, is as a priest on behalf of. So you take the place if your bloodline has been guilty of, you know, witchcraft or sexual immorality or perversion, or whatever that's coming up and you are being brought to this place to take a place to repent. You stand on behalf of yourself and your bloodline all the way back to Adam. And, and you stand on behalf of yourself. Then what you do is you come, and take it as though it's your own. You're doing it on behalf of the bloodline. So you would say, Father, I repent 
on behalf of myself and my bloodline all the way back to Adam for our agreement with sexual immorality and perversion. And we have not judged this because it's continuing to happen. If it's continuing to happen in the bloodline, it's a reason to come and have it dealt with. But you're coming and taking that place of a priest on behalf of the bloodline. So um, oftentimes, and I just want to throw this in because it's, it's something that can be um, applied. It's, it's just a, a little sort of example of how you can, you can deal with something is that there's five different things that you can apply uh, to a specific situation. And I'll give you an example. So say this, you're, you're repenting on behalf of your bloodline for sexual perversion and immorality. And, and so on five of these areas, you can, you can take that to the mobile court. The one would be repenting for promoting it. The one would be repenting for being a victim or um, having a victim mentality, living in victim mentality over it. You were victimized into sexual immorality and perversion in your bloodline was. Uh, repenting for condoning it, uh, for condoning sexual immorality and perversion. Repenting for uh, being afraid, intimidated by sexual advances and immorality and perversion, the fears that go along with it, and repenting for being judgmental of sexual immorality and perversion in others. And so those are just five areas that you could apply when you, when you actually are repenting on behalf of something. So as I say, we come as, mm -hmm. as in, in a humble manner, knowing that Jesus has provided forgiveness for the whole bloodline, for the whole of creation, for all time. There's nothing outside of his provision of forgiveness or sins and iniquities and transgressions and wounds and everything. So it's all been applied. We're just taking it and appropriating it. Now, when you've repented, um, um, I like to take and, and, and just say that I, I trade on the blood of Jesus to remove the record of that transgression, of that iniquity out of the record of the DNA in a bloodline. So we just receive... The two ways we receive the blood of Jesus to remove the trading that the bloodline and us have done, that we've done um, the trading into the demonic that we've operated into. When we say trading, we mean the way that we have agreed with. All the times that we in our bloodline agreed with the sexual immorality and perversion that we, that we gave room to it, we were, we were trading onto the platform of the demonic of sexual immorality and perversion. And so um, we, we receive the power of the blood of Jesus to wipe out all their trading that was done. We receive the power of the blood of Jesus to remove the record of that iniquitous pattern in our DNA for us and for our generations to come as well. See, because as we stand in that position on behalf of us and our bloodline, we are cutting off an iniquitous pattern that it will no longer continue in the bloodline to come. And so we receive the cleansing in the, in the DNA. And of course, the cleansing to the soul and body gates where it was given room. And so we, that's how we trade on the blood of Jesus. And when there's things that have been done, especially in the um, witchcraft and so on areas, we can also... Um, trade on the blood of Jesus to remove the trades that have been done in witchcraft into the stars, the sun, the moon, the earth, the waters, and so on. And so we, we receive the power of the blood and we um, have our names removed from where we had had our names written on traded into the stars, you know, because when you're in witchcraft, you trade into the stars and so on. So we can have that removed by the blood of Jesus. We just agree that everything that we traded into in our bloodline that um, operated into the stars or the moon or into the waters, the different witchcraft things, is, is removed. And the, the altars that were built there that had our name on it are smashed and are nullified. And so we learn, we learn how to um, um, function in ways to not only for ourselves, but also for our bloodline um, to stand in that place in the mobile court.
And why it's mobile is because it's in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is within us. So we can convene it at any time because any time we need to, we can just come and say, I'll see. Sometimes, as Kathy said, you don't know, you may not know what the accusations are. Sometimes we come into the mobile court because something is, we know, like she said, there was anger there. She knew what it was. She just didn't know when it didn't know what it was rooted in and needed to see where the roots were so that that could be dealt with. And so, um, but sometimes we, we can see a pattern and we don't, and it, and it may not be a pattern that we consciously think that we are um, guilty of, okay? And so that, would, my example would be a testimony that a lot of times over um, my, my life, I've experienced betrayal of trust in the last, and, and usually what would happen would be that, you know, I would forgive and just let release and let go. It would never be properly resolved with the people concerned or whatever, but it was because it was a pattern that would keep cropping up. And <clears throat> the last time that it happened, I decided I'm going to go to the mobile court on this. I'm going to go and see how it is, what, what is giving, how is the enemy having a right to put this betrayal of trust in my path, you know, and to bring it. And so as I went to the Lord about it, not knowing how it had uh, been, how there was room given, then the Lord showed me that I had actually allowed use and abuse in my life. I had let a door be open to that in my life, and the enemy came in through that. And so then it became not just me forgiving others for what they had done or whatever, but it became me taking responsibility because now I could see that the accusation was, well, you've allowed it. You've got this door open. You've given me room. And when I realized that, then I had to take that personal responsibility on behalf of myself and my bloodline where we had allowed that use and abuse in our, in our, in our lives. And, and then the Lord said, and I shut the door to that. I canceled it out. I removed the right of the enemy. The enemy was judged because that's what also happens when you've, when you've taken the blood of Jesus to trade, to remove all the trading you've done and the record of the, the iniquity in your DNA, then you also have the, recognize the enemy being judged. Those demonic principalities, powers, the familiar demonic beings that had operated are canceled out. The, the, the assignments canceled. They have no more authority. They judged and so on. And so having judged the enemy there um, on behalf of myself and my bloodline, then, then the Lord said to me, now you take honor into your heart, into your gate where, where you had allowed the dishonor and everything. Now you've shut the door to that. Now you take honor. So um, there's an example of where not knowing exactly how this enemy was able to operate against me, I then began to see in the court by asking that the accusation that was there was really about me needing to take a responsibility. And that's really what it is, because if the enemy is having any kind of opportunity, it's because we've given it to him in some way. And so this is why we have this court that we can go to at any time. We can engage it at any time we like. The court is already always there convened for us. So we, there are the two other courts that go along with the mobile court, the court of war and the court of angels are a help to us because sometimes we, we can go there for, for strategy to the court of war and, and, and we can go to the court of angels after we have been in the mobile court and received back and taken back what was stolen. We've, we've asked for it back and we've, we've taken it by faith or we've even seen um, you know, as I said, sometimes there's th things that go on in the court that you can actually see the crown being given to you or being restored to you. And, um, but then we can also take that, that court case um, to the court of angels and we can present the, the verdict to the angels and at the court of angels and ask for angels to be assigned to help um, to facilitate and to help establish the, the results of the court case to bring about all the restoration and so on of what we took back in the in the mobile court and so all of these courts are 
as, as an expression of the joy that was set before Jesus that <laughs> he endured the cross so that we could come into the, our full and complete victory of all the power of the enemy and he shall by no means harm us, you know, and we could come into our wholeness and into the fullness of nothing less than the standard heart of Christ's perfection. So um, we can, I think we should probably leave it there. We will next week go into more of the different courts and maybe we can talk a bit more about using the courts also for mandates that we get that are not specifically for us and our own gates, but um, to do with a mandate for a purpose, a nation, etc. Amen, Kathy? Yep, <clears throat> sounds good. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you very much. Hey, um, other, yeah. So, yeah, let's just add that um, the the courts, you can kind of see a menorah in there, and the menorah is a, a kind of symbolic of the Melchizedek priesthood. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, this down the center, and if you put the mobile court below the below that line, then the other three above there, the court of kings to the court of war, and now you can see that there's a menorah in there, and it's a part of representing the the Melchizedek order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks, Kat. All right, well, every, we bless you all and um, look forward to next week. Yep, post any questions in the chat. Yes. Okay. Um.